Hi guys, so I think the DUP have finally discovered after many years of refusing to accept reality that they finally admit that they've been placed under a bus by the Conservative Party. Now this clip speaks volumes. First notice how empty the parliamentary chamber is when Ian Paisley Jr. raises his issue about Northern Ireland. It shows just how much the Conservative Party care about what's happening in Northern Ireland and Ian perhaps is starting to realise that too. He was actually challenged by a fellow Brexiteer on how much the Tories do care about Northern Ireland. I think the Brexit penny has finally dropped for at least one DUP MP. Uh, thank you, um, Mr Deputy Speaker. I think there is truth to the point tonight that four days into a crisis, actually almost five days into a crisis, the Prime Minister of this nation has not spoken. I think that's wrong. I think the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom ought to have spoken on Thursday evening about this issue. Mm -hmm. and I think he should not have shut up about it until the issue is resolved. I think they are his responsibilities. And when you, when you view a crisis, a constitutional crisis, through a prism of a divided community, which is what Northern Ireland is, you create suspicions and you raise concerns unless those matters are properly addressed. And I think it is very obvious to some people that there is a fear that the Conservative and Unionist Party, which governs this nation, is actually a Nationalist Party, <laughs> an English Nationalist Party. OK, I've been saying this for years, and finally maybe Ian Paisley understands it. When it came to Brexit and protecting the Union, Brexiteers like Boris Johnson, the ERG and others decided we want to have our Brexit, come what may. You know, we don't care about Scotland, we don't care about Northern Ireland, we don't really care about Wales either, we care about our Brexit. And I remember covering this in the past as well, some months ago, where a Tory MP, when she was asked about the situation in Northern Ireland and the Northern Ireland Protocol, her response was, and I'm paraphrasing here, Northern Ireland is hundreds of miles away. My constituents don't care about that. They wanted Brexit. They wanted Boris Johnson to get Brexit done. So when Ian Paisley says that the Conservative Party or people are saying, obviously he's saying it for himself, but people are saying that um, there's a belief that <laughs> the Conservative and Unionist Party is an English Nationalist Party. Well, he's right. They don't care about the Union. They wanted their Brexit. That is not concerned about a border in the Irish Sea, but it's concerned about a red wall on the island, the mainland island, and that that's what eats them up every single day. And if that is their only concern, then that government is betraying the union mm -hmm. and the unionist people. And that is the reality of where we are this evening. We'll and in a moment, when I make the point, and I, and I will, I think it is very obvious to all of us who have been warning about this crisis from whatever side of the divide we are on, whether we are nationalists or unionists or whatever, that this was bound to come to a head. And it is the unfortunate reality that that is what has happened. And of course, I will give way. Honourable gentleman is aiming his artillery at the wrong enemy. The truth is that this protocol and trade across Northern Ireland is no threat whatsoever to the integrity of the single market. This government has done its level best to try and get trade flowing completely freely. It's the EU. It's the EU which is just making it so impossible. Mr Deputy Speaker, no one from that side of the House needs to read a lecture about the support that this party and the people of Ulster invested in a government on that side of the House. No one. No one. The only reason why you've got a Brexit and this and GB is because of the support that the unionist people of Northern Ireland gave to that party. Isn't this pathetic? <laughs> so the DUP campaigned for Brexit. 
they supported Brexit, even though many people, including John Major, uh, Tony Blair and others were saying, look, it's a bad idea. It will damage the union. But the DUP did not care. The DUP said, no, 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 we want our Brexit. And I've been saying this for years. And I, and I think this clip reinforces that point. The DUP, their hatred of Europe and of Ireland is stronger than any love for the Union. I could even call maybe the DUP a nationalist party, an English nationalist party, because they don't care about Northern Ireland. They actually don't care about the Union. Truly, I, I don't see any care for the Union here, because when it came to the Brexit or the Union, the DUP chose Brexit. And now they're complaining about the consequences of the Union probably going, it's probably going to be broken up. Scotland is moving closer to independence. Northern Ireland is cl moving closer to a united Ireland. And it couldn't have happened without Brexit. Well, no, it would have been, it's been sped up. I, I, I should correct myself. It's been sped up because of Brexit. A Brexit that the DUP campaigned for and, and are not changing their mind on. Ian Paisley has not turned around and said Brexit is a mistake. No, no, no. He still supports Brexit. He still thinks it's a, it's a good idea. But I think the point to take away from this clip is that he now realizes, well, he's claiming other people are realizing it, but he's realizing that the Conservative and Unionist Party is an English nationalist party. It's a Brexit party. When it came once again to protecting the Union or getting Brexit, they got their Brexit. They wanted their Brexit. And to hell with the consequences. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.